kept consists the demo for its upcoming remake of Resident Evil 2 was downloaded over 3 million times since it went live on January 11th. The demo itself has an interesting quirk, dubbed the one-shot demo, the short slice of Resident Evil, to give players only 30 minutes to make their way through the enemies and puzzles in the game's third level. Once that 30 minute run is over, players cannot start the demo again on that same account. The downside to that limitation however, is, inevitably, players quickly found ways around it that likely have inflated that 3 million download figure. Console players can make additional accounts to get a second, a third, or fourth shot while PC players have found ways to trick the demo into allowing additional plays. Another interesting read on the demo comes from data shared on Capcom as Resident Evil Net website. Of those 3 million downloads, roughly 2 5 million players opted to enable Raynet's play data tracker and help get more data on the demo's completion. For instance, only about 26% of those 2 5 million players completed the demo within the time limit. Unity has blocked the use of real-time multiplayer platforms patterns, leaving many developers who rely on the service in a state of limbo. A change to the Unity Terms of Service means all existing Spatalos titles, including production games and those still in development, are now in breach of the company's license terms. Spatalos creator Improbable broke the news in a blog post and explained Unity has also revoked its split it will continue working with the engine for operating the newly changed terms of service in an unspecified way. That means the company will no longer be able to fully support Unity developers, as to MEOF whom have been forced to shut down the servers of their Spatalos projects, although Improbable believes the unfortunate and counterproductive action to be a simple error in judgment, a coordination failure on Unity's part. The company is worried by the fact the change occurred during an open commercial negotiation with the engine maker. Overnight, this is an action by Unity that has immediately done harm to projects across the industry, including those of extremely vulnerable or small-scale developers, and Damaged major projects in development over many years, wrote Improbable. Games that have been funded based on the promise of Spatlos to deliver next generation multiplayer are now endangered due to their choice of a engine. Live games are now in legal limbo. All customers who entered into a relationship with Ascend Unity previously did so on the good faith understanding that the terms they signed up to, sometimes years ago, would allow them to be successful and not carry additional charges. Improbable is now urgently seeking a solution to the situation, and says it will do everything in its power to solve the issue in good faith with unity with the ideal outcome, being a reversal of the terms change. In the meantime, the company has pledged to help developers using Spatalos with Unity finish, release, and operate their games, and is setting up an emergency fund for partners who ally on now bathroom into the financial mire. Improbable will also be fully open sourcing the Spatalos game development kit for Unity under the MIT license, in the hope it might assist individual customers in some way. Those interested can find out more about the dispute over on the Improbable blog. Unity has announced its first annual Unity for Humanity contest, an initiative with a focus on aims that inspire meaningful change. One developer will be awarded $25.000 in funding to help bring their project to fruition. This is a great opportunity for developers who feel as though their work could make an impact on others, and receive the added benefit of funding and mentorship as well. 
as explained in a blog post, eligible projects are those that are recurrently in development, but not yet completed. Projects must also demonstrate plans for distribution and be willing to submit all the business to consumers at the event. In addition, a prototype part video demoing the project must be provided, along with a detailed pitch or treatment outlining the project details. It's worth noting that submitted projects must utilize Unity as the only 3D game engine software used during production. Interested developers can head here for the full list of contest terms and conditions. If they choose to submit their work, digital board games have a lot of advantages. The material often has an established player base, robust rules, and well-developed game pieces and art styles. Despite these advantages, bringing a board game to the digital realm has its share of design challenges. In this DD 2018 session, Temple Gates Games, Teresa Duringer, presents design tricks for digitizing games like Race for the Galaxy. It was an insightful talk that's definitely still worth watching. So developers should not miss the opportunity to do so now that it's freely available on the official GD YouTube channel. In addition to this presentation, THDDDC Vault and its accompanying YouTube channel offers numerous other free videos, audio recordings, and slides from many of the recent game developers' conference events. And the service offers even more members only content for DD Vault subscribers. Those who purchased all access passes to recent events, like DD, a vertical already have full access to DD Vault. And interested parties can apply for the individual subscription via the DMOD subscription page. Group subscriptions are also available. Game-related schools and development studios who sign up for the DMOD studio subscriptions can receive access for their entire office or company by contacting staff via the HGDC Vault group subscription page. Finally. Current subscribers with access issues can contact DD Vault Technical Support, Goddard Sutra and DD Sibling Organizations, under parent company and former organizers of the 19th Annual Game Developers' Choice Awards, GDCA, the premier accolades for peer recognition, celebrating the industry's top games, studios and developers have revealed that veteran legendary game developer Rico Kodama will receive this year's Pioneer Award, which honors breakthrough tech and game design milestones. The GDCA will recognize Kodama for her career in game development, spanning more than three decades, including her work on some of the most beloved titles in Sega's classic games like Rare from Fantasy Star. Through Alex Kidd to Skies of Arcadia and beyond, Kodama is a trailblazing game artist, director and producer, who established her career during an era in which women game designers' contributions and activity in the industry were less recognized, eventually heading development on some of the industry's most well-regarded Japanese role-playing games, Jacks. Beginning her professional career at Sega in 1984, Kodama made her industry debut with Champion Boxing on the company's SG-1000 game console. As a new hire, Kodama learned how to create pixel art and animation from veteran designers at the company, eventually refining her work to create designs for arcade games like Seek an intro on the quartet, before moving on to the Seek Mark Field, otherwise known as the Seek Master System in non-Japanese territories. On the more advanced hardware, she honed her skills to contribute background designs for the now classic Alex Kit in Miracle World, and Kiachwork for Fonty Sea Star, moving on to the 16-bit Mega Drive platform. Oh, as the Seeker Genesis in North America.
Kodomic contributed key artwork for such landmark genre defining titles as Auto Beast, Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Castle, and Sonic the Hedgehog. All the while, Kodomic worked alongside other game development pioneers, such as Yuji Naka, creator of Sonic the Hedgehog, and Yu Suzuki, former head of Ventur, the team behind Virtual Fighter. It was during the Sega Mega Drive Genesis era that Kodama further exemplified her development prowess, serving as the team leader, analyst, to a modern day game director role for Fantasy Star, the end of the millennium, known as Fantasy Star IV in North America. Her stellar work at Sega continued into the 90s and 00s. With directorial work on Magic Knight Rain Earth on Seeker Saturn, and the producer role on Deep Fear, and Seeker Dreamcast Skies of Arcadia, and the subsequent release on Nintendo Amicube, Skies of Arcadia Legends. With three and a half decades of game development, Kodomi drew from her experience and expertise to produce the Seventh Dragon series of RPGs on Nintendo DS. Nintendo 3DS and PlayStation Portable platforms. Her current role sees her producing the Seeking Ages series of classic game ports on the Nintendo Switch.